This is going to be a video showing artificial iris placement as well as cataract surgery in a 15 year old with aniridia and you can see she's already had a, a tube shunt placed due to uncontrolled glaucoma. And that tube shunt seems to have accelerated the cataract and it's time for us to try and get things repaired. Now in this case we're not going to use Vision Blue to help with the with the cataract portion, we're going to go back to using ICG. Uh, Vision Blue has been noted to cause the capsules to become a little bit more fragile. And in patients with aniridia, where they already have a very thin capsule, we don't need to make things any harder for us. So we're going to carefully make our capsular excess here. Uh, the capsular excess forcep that I'm using is a prototype made by Microsurgical Technology, or MST. It's got a very fine tip, and you can see the little gradations on the capsular excess. That helps us measure how big the capsular excess could be. And those very fine jaws allow you to see just right at the very tip so you know exactly where you're grabbing. And I was glad that I, I had this forcep in this case because this capsular excess was actually very challenging to tear as it kept wanting to tear out very much like a, almost like an infantile or very pediatric type cataract. Now I ended up getting a complete capsular excess, but I wasn't real happy with the size. I thought that the relatively small capsular excess may make it difficult for putting the artificial iris in down the road, but figured, hey, well, while we've got it, might as well finish taking out the cataract. Luckily, it's relatively soft since she's so young. Uh, no phaco is needed at all. And here we are just aspirating off this little scar in the capsular bag, and you can see how it's just directly underneath where that tube shunt is. Couldn't really aspirate it. We ended up just pulling it out of the eye with the aspirator. To try and make it a bit easier for the artificial iris placement, I'm going to enlarge the capsular excess. And I had a lot of concern about doing this, but figured I might as well give it a shot. So we just took a little uh, intraocular scissor. That was the, the horizontal scissor, uh, also by MST, just to start the rexus. And then I'm just going to peel around another millimeter or so. I, I don't need to go all the way around the capsule, just enough to make it easier for me to tuck that large artificial iris into the capsular bag. So very, very careful tearing here, making sure not to extend the rexus out. Just trying to get another millimeter or so of size. And eventually we're successful at doing that. Now any patient getting artificial iris, especially somebody with aniridia, is going to get a capsular tension ring. This is going to keep equal tension out on the capsular bag. It's going to help prevent chances of dislocation down the road, and it's going to help prevent phimosis of the capsular bag. So in goes the CTR. We're going to measure the capsular bag. In this case, it's right around 10 millimeters. IOL goes in, and now we're going to add some viscoelastic to deepen the chamber and then inject our artificial iris. Now this is where the challenge com comes in. This is a large implant. It's made of silicone. This is the without fiber artificial iris. And you can see that leading edge goes into the capsular bag. And now with the help of a Snyder grasper, which is a 25 gauge uh, micro forcep as well as a lens positioner, we're going to carefully grab the artificial pupil border turn or twist the, 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 the forcep, which is going to shorten the cord length of the artificial iris, and then carefully try and dunk that into the capsular bag. There we go. And now you can also see why we stained the capsular bag. It's very difficult to see that edge. Sometimes, just like you see here, the artificial iris will get stuck underneath the haptic or the CTR. So we're just going to take our, our forcep and carefully Make sure that the artificial iris is anterior or on top of the CTR and haptic. Remove the viscoelastic. In these cases, uh, we do have to enlarge the incision, so a tenon nylon goes in to close the wound. And as long as everything has gone smoothly, we've got a nice, successful case. Thank you very much for watching.